Hello, I'm Mansi from WCC. Um, uh, last year we saw a few companies, we have something called as internships, and we saw a few companies opening up to the idea of using mathematical statistics, and they, uh, and they used uh, like a few of our students, and they engaged with it, and they wanted to know where their companies would be after a few years. I'm, I'm not familiar with the subject, but we have teachers who are familiar with it, and, and our students like did a good job, and they came back. So like, uh, how, how do we make the corporate sector see the need of mathematicians? For instance, these days we don't see people using operations research to maximize their profit or minimize the loss in their companies. So if there is some kind of uh, like interaction between the corporate sector and mathematicians, then there would be more healthy, like um, the world would be a much better place to live in. So how do we, I mean, engage them in seminars or make them see the need of mathematics? Yeah. Well, um, this, is, this is a tough question. Tough question because I don't think students can do anything about it. Neither do I think that corporate sector can do anything about it. I think the people who must do it, and that's why it's tough for me to answer here because I know there are faculty present here. It has to be done by the math faculty. Right? Maths faculty will have to attract corporate sector to come in, involve them. Well, you know, like TCS has come over here. This is a, um, in a program that is going on with students and faculty involved. You bring in the corporate sector so that they know how it could be helpful. See, statistics is a different ball game altogether. That everybody knows is helpful. And, you know, there is jobs for statistics. Mathematical statistics, yes, again, there are jobs, as uh, I'm sure Rajiv will be able to explain. But uh, when it comes to pure maths, which I think is completely ignored by people outside of mathematics, is a big problem for India. Right? And there, it is the faculty which have to play a role. They have to go out and get the corporate sector interested. Right? That will also attract funding, and that will also be able to uh, generate an interest in what mathematics can do for the corporate sector. Yes. I just want to mention that the IIT Madras has a, a course on industrial mathematics where there are projects taken with the corporates and students uh, have one supervisor from the corporates and, and I think they get jobs also in the industry. So there you are, the faculty. So we are in a position where we have to create the demand also, in some sense. We are at that level. Thank you, Subhashish. Our uh, next speaker is uh, Dr. Rajiva Karandikar. Many of you, I think, know him already, so he does not need an introduction to most of you here. Uh, he obtained his PhD at the Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata, in 1981. He spent some years as a visiting professor in the USA and returned to Indian Statistical Institute, Delhi, in 1984 as an associate professor. He became a full professor in 89 and served as head of Department of Mathematics and Statistics at the Institute and also as head of Delhi Center of the Institute. He has been a visiting professor at several universities in USA and Europe. In 2006, he moved to Crane's Software International Limited as executive vice president. So here is a mathematician who has done it, you know, been on both sides of the uh, road, analytics. He is now the director of Chennai Mathematical Institute, Chennai, India. He has made significant contributions to various areas, including stochastic calculus, filtering theory, Markov processes, and Martingale problems, limit theorems, Mont SS Bhatnagar Prize by Council of Industrial and Scientific Research, 1999, and C.R. Rao National Award in Statistics by Government of India in the year 2000. He has worked on development of proprietary block cipher algorithms for Indian Defense Services. Dr. Karandikar has been involved with opinion polls and exit polls. In fact, many of you may have seen him on television in India since 1998. He has worked with India Today, Doordarshan, TV Today, Ashtak, and CNBC, CNN, IBN for opinion polls. He has been an editor of Sankhya and on the editorial boards of Annals of Probability and Journal of Statistical Planning and Inference. Uh, Dr. Karandikar. 
I don't I have not made any slides so that gives me a little advantage I can pick up the thread where Shubhashish left off uh, on a lighter note let me say this is a rare occasion that an economist and a mathematician are in, ag are in agreement in toto I endorse everything that Shubhashish said uh, <coughs> few offshoots of whatever discussion and questions so firstly uh, this business about mathematics and statistics in statistics there are jobs in mathematics there are no jobs but one has to uh, think about this on a wider scale mathematical sciences or if uh, a, a mathematician can easily pick up the required statistics uh, to do at least an elementary job or if you face if a student faces an interview and they said ask about statistics uh, the student should say even if he has not studied statistics he said okay I have not taken a courses in it but I can learn you know it's it should not be that no 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 this is not my subject because that shows a closeness of mind and that is a common problem with maths and math student you know you ask a question this is no no group theory special paper I have not done you know so uh, so you come if, if you compartmentalize yourself with only the special papers you took and say that I know nothing outside of that then uh, the corporate uh, sector who is trying to interview you to hire you uh, determines that you know you are a close mind person you will be very difficult to work for a team to work with you are not fit for the job okay so this is the first thing that uh, we, we have to come out of our shell, we by we I mean uh, mathematicians or students who seek to go in the outside world to take job, have to come out of their shell and have to have an attitude that okay this is even if one has not studied this particular topic that they want for to apply, let's say I ask about optimization something something, you say oh no no this I have not done. Instead of that you have to again say that uh, I can't exactly tell you no but I can always figure it out you know at, at least that much confidence uh, they should have and this as uh, most of you as here are uh, you know teachers some students are there but uh, larger uh, faces I see is uh, number is student teachers and that is what we have to convey to the student population who are likely to take up jobs in the industry that they have to be open they have to be willing to learn new things not restrict themselves that I am only interested in uh, group theory or I am only interested in uh, function analysis I don't know what is algebra things like that uh, <clears throat> so uh, you see in, in, in most of the applications in real world the, if you are looking at a building a mathematical model uh, you can't run away from statistics and probability theory because lots of uh, models are not deterministic uh, and whether you have studied it or not if you take up a job you have to be willing to read that stuff and uh, apply that now let me go back a little bit and say that uh, there has been a change 30 or 40 years ago when I was a student and when at least some of the people in this audience were students at that time the industry uh, and mathematics these were like disjoint okay there was an interface of people with quality control or operations research that was in the manufacturing industry that was about the only interface the rest of the thing mathematicians were considered you know nothing to do with the real world but something did change over the last 30-40 uh, years first is uh, liberalization so industry has got some incentive to optimize to economize before that they, they, they didn't really even have an incentive whatever is the cost they can pass it on to a customer there was no competition so you once you get your uh, uh, permission to produce something you can sell it at whatever price you might so that was one change and that has uh, continuously changed and uh, the second uh, which also Shubhashish mentioned is uh, to do with uh, computing power you know going back 30 years uh, uh, an industrialist comes uh, to a mathematician and uh, asks uh, how can he help in such and such problem mathematician says yeah yeah great we discuss we do everything in the end the mathematician offers a solution solution is in terms of some infinite dimensional differential equation so the <laughs> industrialist says okay but now what should I do the mathematician oh I don't know I have just I have given you a solution of a differential equation he says yeah okay give me the solution he says no that is not solvable <laughs> so uh, today what you can do is uh, you can have numerical uh, procedures numerical procedures existed then but uh, even for the problem like Shubhash is mentioned with that many variables it was not possible to do it with even the computing power available at that point of time today the computing power has increased many fold and so the capability 
to make and uh, realistic models to solve them and at least solve them numerically has increased many fold so this in particular has increased the demand number one however again as subhashish said the if you are looking for an industry who is looking to hire full time mathematicians uh, that is finance industry or consulting agencies who are doing financial services that still remains as the major full time employer of mathematics students government sector yes uh, in particular cryptography uh, that is one area in which a uh, government uh, or governmental agencies are looking to hire mathematicians in large number and they say that we don't really need people who have been trained in cryptography you give us somebody who is trained well in uh, number theory and who knows what is the elliptic curve and who knows how to do some computations on elliptic curve and we'll hire him or her okay and <coughs> of course this is not infinite demand but at the moment given the supply we can almost treat it as such today uh, if we can show 100 people who have satisfied this bill uh, uh, satisfy this criteria then uh, we can find jobs for them of course uh, everybody is taken in by the uh, package uh, news that one reads in the newspapers that you know so and so got so many lakhs as package or now uh, so many crores as package now crores as package when uh, the media uh, does not tell you that this is crores not in india but in the us and then the counting the salary in rupees has absolutely no meaning number one number two uh, while the corporate salaries are higher uh, what we see in media is the salary of one person in the batch in iit who gets that salary it's not average it's not the bottom it's not even the median it's not even the 75th quantile it is one salary so the uh, students have this uh, false this thing that you know uh, uh, the corporate job there is this much salary and government jobs is uh, much less it is less but it is not as less as people think it is to do with how you compute the so called package so what all is included in the package and what not and such things one has to look at anyway so cryptography is one area in which there are enough jobs in the government sector uh, now uh, since i said that finance and financial services is the one sector which has the largest number of jobs uh, let me also tell that here also my comment about you know being open and being willing to learn new things again comes in if somebody says that no he is a first class first in his university or institute in mathematics and you know everybody should can learn to him they have to pose the problem to him or her as a mathematics problem and then the person will solve that is never going to happen because again as shubhashi said mathematics is a tool is not a end for the corporate so the concerned mathematics student has to uh, go out of his or her own way to learn the language of the other side you know uh, often i have said this uh, in various forum that uh, a typical mathematics student who comes out with an msc does not know the difference between revenue and profit and when i have said this if i am surrounded by math professors they also look at me as if okay they also don't know now when that is the case how do you expect a financial company to hire this person because when they are posing a problem they assume a certain basic background at the other end okay because how far can you go i mean if you are teaching somebody mathematics you don't start with 2 plus 2 equal to 4 right you assume a certain background of mathematics at the other end so likewise when a finance person is trying to hire someone for a job he or she would assume that the concerned candidate has some background in absence of that it can lead to chaos so i'll cite one example this is not a mathematician but uh, engineer so called software engineers so i do this election work so once uh, they gave me a team of people who were supposed to write the program for data processing of incoming uh, result stream and then when two days later i need to review uh, you know that created some very complicated database structure and i, I kept asking why so then it uh, 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 then i realized that the people who were doing the programming they had no clue of what the political system is they thought that each party can put in n number of candidates in every constituency so the, the database had <laughs> this complexity <laughs> so we made that correction and you know i told them this what is this you should change this and simplify it because then complicated design means complicated lot more time to you know converge so okay 3 days later when i go again now there are different problems so i again have to it was giving some weird answers when we put in the last year's data then it should give me what the answers i expect so it was giving weird 
at the end again I realized that they thought that independent is name of a political party. <laughs> now, here I said this example because here it shows that you know when you are trying to pose a problem, you make a certain basic assumption. Okay, when that is not true, it can go haywire. So likewise, when those, uh, uh, so if you are teaching a course and uh, you know we want our students to go up and take up a job in financial industry, it's not a must that they have to have a course in economics. If it, we can arrange that, that is better. If not, at least you should give them pointers towards web resources or elementary books. If you do not know, ask your economics colleagues to elementary books, ask them to at least read and get familiar with the basic terminology. If you do that and in the interview you are asked, you, the student says that, well, I didn't quite have economics course, but I have read these books, that already goes a big plus. That, okay, you are willing to go out of your shell to learn to interact with the world. Okay? So, uh, the, we as faculty members, teachers, we have to inculcate this culture, which is quite different from what the culture in which we grew up or we were taught, uh, that the uh, world has changed. There are jobs, but uh, the students who want to take up these jobs have to be willing to go out of their shell. And you also advise the students. Uh, you see, financial services industry is somebody who is looking to hire people for full time, maybe policy uh, in, uh, bodies too. But uh, they may hire a few youngsters as a full time, but uh, they would be looking to have uh, association with some senior mathematicians. Uh, senior by gray hair and number of years and perhaps experience uh, to uh, you know facilitate this uh, whole process. So a consulting assignment. So be it uh, 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 agency like this or uh, other industry, uh, the transportation industry or uh, uh, various industries, they have requirement for mathematical, they have mathematical problems, but it is not big enough for them to hire. If they hire a fresher, he may, or she may not be able to solve it, and it, uh, there is not, not enough material for them to hire a senior mathematician, but they can have enough material for consulting. And I would like to urge, uh, you know, uh, math faculty across uh, universities and institutes, not all maybe, uh, but a good fraction at least to be willing for this. You don't have to be doing research in applied mathematics to talk to uh, industry and you know give them advice or uh, understand their problem and try to solve their problem. If maybe not singleton, but if two or three uh, mathematicians uh, together talk to an industry uh, who have a certain problem, they pose it to you. Collectively, you should be able to figure it out. After all, if you look at it from a uh, uh, higher level, mathematics is about analytical thinking, analytical training. We are taught to, given a set of assumptions, what all deduction, what all conclusions we can draw from them and where does it stop and where we have to, uh, what does not follow from this. So, uh, lot of what industry might need is to do with uh, this kind of uh, analysis. And when it finally you zero it to, you know, it is a quadratic programming problem, okay, if you don't know what is quadratic programming problem, you can look it up or you can find somebody else who can look it. But you would have made the transition of understanding the problem and translating it to a quadratic programming problem. And that I think uh, if some of the faculty members are doing that, are willing to do that. Uh, of course, the difficult question is how does the industry know that you are willing and how do they approach you? That's a more difficult question. And that can only happen by word of mouth, uh, but a beginning can be made that way. So, uh, one more thing I would like to touch, which is uh, uh, not yet today, uh, but in times to come, biotechnology is also going to be an area which is going to look to hire mathematicians. Uh, again, not theorem proof mathematicians, not mathematicians who want to restrict themselves to group theory or algebra but uh, uh, people who want to pose as mathematical sciences expert who are on a wider platform come what may okay if i don't know it i'll read it okay with that attitude uh, because uh, uh, many areas in and i this includes statistics probability because many of the biological applications genetics bioinformatics and uh, various other things these are not deterministic these are all statistical probabilistic in nature and uh, in India, we have a real shortage of people who are into both mathematics and biology, who are experts or at least comfortable with both. But in times to come, that is a need which is emerging and is felt. So, uh, 
and uh, learning biology is not going to be as simple as, as I said, you know, ask a colleague and get an economics book and ask him to read because it's more difficult. I have tried and with not great success, I must say, the biology part. So uh, it's more serious Where and well, uh, good enough for the purpose at hand. Not, I don't claim to be, oops, claim to have got, uh, but it was good enough for the purpose. Biology, I even could not get to that. So that's the difference. It's a very different, uh, it has to do with mindset. Maybe I gave up biology in class 9 because I didn't like it and so it has, I have a more of a mental barrier against that. But uh, there is a need certainly and uh, but how we can help fulfill that I don't know because most of the people here, mathematicians like me would have given up biology if not in class 9 maybe by, uh, I think now what, class 12, right? Yeah. So. Uh, what we can do about it, I don't know, but there is something which I just thought I will make you aware, that's all. So, I think my time is up and let me stop. Uh, do you think that um, the maths curriculum hmm. as it's transacted needs to change a little bit to make our students more aware of uh, you know, things like revenue, profit, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth, while at the same time serving the needs of mathematics as well. Yeah, I certainly think so. And that can be achieved via optionals. You know, uh, let us give students options. And those who are looking to go for a job, let them pick up, uh, offer them, uh, you know, the economics or uh, uh, courses as optionals, taught by the economists, not by us. Uh, as options, uh, it's maybe difficult to arrange, but at least we have to make an effort to do that. And if there is a university where there is economics department, all the more better. So uh, offer these as options, so that those who intend to go towards that direction can choose that. And those who want to pursue PhD in maths, they can continue with whatever uh, they want to study otherwise. And this option set could increase over time. Right now it is finance and uh, so on. There can be more options which bio could be in times to come. So certainly we, we must offer them and we have to give a signal that that is also fine. It is not that those who are struggling in maths should go and do economics courses. If we give that signal, that will defeat the purpose. Okay? It should not be that uh, you know research and so on is only for the good guys. Those who cannot cope with it, they, they should go there. No. Uh, that should not happen. That we have to be careful because that will not serve a purpose. Yes, I agree. But uh, it would help if uh, the math, younger generation also learn some biology. I mean, this is what you say will work, and that's a second option. Is this the maximum number of data than that? Absolutely correct. Yes, <laughs> absolutely correct. So that's why I'm arguing that if in the math curriculum somewhere, uh, uh, as options, they can pick up a little biology, it will go a long way. It will help the dialogue. You see, if if you put in just four biologists and four mathematicians, they may not. But if you put in one person who is somewhat conversant with both, it will facilitate the dialogue a lot. So. Yeah, yeah, so we have to see that impact when they come into the industry, yes. The first batch is finished, right? So. I don't know how many of you know this, but in CMI itself, they have this BSc program in mathematics and physics. Uh, economics is one of the core subjects for them. They have to do it compulsively. And I have taught that program. So it, it was a great experience for me teaching them. And I know that even in IITs, economics is taught, right? In the BTEC, there's a course. Am I right? Several open, Several open courses. Oh, they're optional, it's like. Okay. Thank you, Rajiva. Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Sharda Ramanan. She's a PhD from Indian Institute of Science, uh, Bangalore, from the Department of Mathematics. She worked with Professor uh, Sachdev on nonlinear ordinary differential equations and singularities. She had the choice of a CSIR postdoc and a career in the industry and she opted for the latter. She joined TCS in 1997. She is currently head of computational intelligence group and reports directly to the chief technology officer of TCS. Her mathematical models are used by Fortune 500 companies such as British Airways, Walmart, Chrysler and Target. She has a patent in assortment optimization. The core engine of the TCS product, Optimera, 
is based on her mathematical models. Dr. Sharda Ramanan. So good afternoon to all. I am happy to be giving, uh, be able to address you all and I thank the organizers uh, Jaya and Vajanti for this. Now it's better? Yeah, okay. So 14 years ago, I was also in the same place as you are all now. I had I had a CSIR postdoctoral fellowship and I thought uh, research was the only alternative and then I got this offer from TCS which I decided to join to just have a shot at it. My ma mathematical models are used by these retailers. I am not a programmer, I am not an analyst, I am a mathematician in the industry. I work out. I work with engineers and MBAs and I formulate a uh, lot of frameworks. I build theories and I directly interact with the clients. And like they said, they were saying about the client oriented problems. I know that my mathematical work models work in the real world. They save money for my clients. TCS is making a product, Optimera, for which the core engine is based on my, ma my mathematical work. And since I have only 15 minutes, I uh, can uh, not go into details of my mathematical work. But uh, I would just like to say that this product has also been uh, uh, reviewed by Gartner and which has put TCS in the leadership position. So here the question here is how mathematics is consumed in the real world. So far last two days and today morning you have heard pure mathematics, all about pure mathematics. Now I am going to tell you something about somebody who pays for mathematics. Somebody, uh, uh, the mathematics works which brings revenue to, my, to your company. The mathematics uh, which runs the business of your clients. TCS is not just a software company, it is also, we also do a lot of research and consulting. Not only the way I do, there are lots of ways that mathematics is consumed by the industry, finance, stock markets, the previous people have covered quite a few of them, risk analysis, algorithmic trading, these are quite a few of them. All types of data from all types of areas come and need to be analyzed by using mathematics. For example, for telecom you have cryptography, you have analytics, you have coding theory, all these can be applied there. This century will be about making sense of data which is already pouring out from all areas and for all directions and all, uh, across all disciplines. So if as mathematicians, you should not miss this opportunity to work. Traditionally, we have had uh, Indians are very good at algorithmic and computations. Examples are Bhaskara, R.C. Bose, C.R. Rao and others. Our current um, mathematical uh, educational program seems to concentrate a lot on theory. So even things like regression, people who come to me, they know the theory part but any practical application or anything to do with the actually applying it, they have no idea. Similarly, the engineers, uh, they, uh, they compress a lot of these mathematics into a single course for them and even their computation is done without much insight. So I see this as more opportunity for us since for people like you and me, since there is no competition there. What are the qualities expected of mathematicians in industry? The real competition is from engineers. We need to compete with the engineers. So without a little bit of programming and computations, we can't beat them at all. Am I good? Okay. This is for the requirements that are required from an undergraduate 
or fresh PGs, uh, which most of uh, things they have covered. So I'll go on. I can always come back. The latest trend is in, le in terms of industry learning R, learning MATLAB. In terms of uh, programming, it is learning Java and Python. Nowadays, they, start, they teach at plus two level computing. So either we need to continue it or leverage on that rather than discontinue that. And I'd like to stress that cryptography, coding theory, etc., are mathematical applications. They are not engineering subjects. Personally, for me, being in TCS is as good as being in academics or even better. I'm having a great time in TCS doing mathematics. If I have uh, more time, I can go into the type of mathematics that I do. Uh, to cover this, yes, TCS is very friendly. We have very friendly HR policies and any of this, I can always come back. Let me go ahead. So these are some of the models of collaborations. Yes, TCS does research and other collaborations with academic institutes. So we have sp sponsored the number is what is currently there. So we have sponsored research programs. We have student internships. The student internships also addresses that person's question, wherein you can come and take an internship for a few months and learn about it. And if you're interested, once you finish your degree, you can always get back to us for placements. Then we have short interaction visits to TCS Innovation Lab. See, uh, when I joined TCS, uh, TRDDC Pune was the only research center. Now there are 2,000 people doing research in TCS. We have a number of TCS Innovation Labs across the globe. And each of these has a theme, like decision support and algorithms is one theme, Web 2.0. There are many themes. So students interested in a particular thing can come as a sabbatical or a short innovation for a short visit to any of these innovation labs and interact. Both formally and informally it is possible. We also have outbound uh, sabbatical program and we have a huge number of joint seminars, workshops, conferences, papers. The interested faculty here, for example, can contact me if they are interested in any, if we can find out some common areas and we can have a joint conference and workshop just as you have in your academic circles. All these are possible. Then we also have research scholar program, 20 institutions and 63. I'll just come down to the detail. See, TCS being essentially a software company, we are interested in encouraging computer science research in India. So we find that most of the students finish their uh, BE or BTEC and go abroad for MS or PhD. So one of the facts we want to stress is to do computer science PhD in India. So TCS is sponsoring around, for example, now 200 PhDs in computer science and related uh, institutes across India starting 2010. And computer science, in a way, is the closest to mathematics. So if any of you have that sort of inclination, TCS is the place. So what does this mean? That the, uh, TCS also, uh, you can join TCS and go and do your uh, research program, or you can do independently. Both ways are possible. So these are our research scholar schemes we have with these institutes and so many scholars in each of these. And these are some of the uh, research areas that they have worked on. This is again uh, going to what the previous uh, speakers of my panel had talked about. Yes, there is a gap because in industry, in the problems that I have looked at, we usually go to the client site, spend one week, 10 days there trying to understand the problem. And so they, they, will, uh, they will be ready to tell you what issues they are facing to convert them into a mathematical problem. That itself is a huge step. So to formulate a problem is, is, is actually applying mathematics, practicing mathematics in the real world. And that's what I do. And then once you formulate a problem, how do you solve it? What methods you have to do a bit of research and even methods that are standard methods don't work with real data. So there's a lot of tweaking required to be done and things like that. These are all the challenges that we face, which is with respect to applying the mathematics you already have. Everybody knows regression. Everybody knows optimization. Everybody knows correlation. 
but when you have actual data and you're looking at it, it makes no sense whatsoever. So there's a lot of iterations going on. At the end of it, finally on the ground, you see a model working and it's running. So that is the pleasure or the happiness you get out of all this. Of course, apart from the money. So how much time do I have? Okay, so uh, this was how a typical uh, consulting, okay, I'm associated with consulting projects in TCS. So the first part is where we un try to understand the client's issues, try to formulate the problem, explore the, what is the uh, relevant area, do some prior re art research. And then from that, instead of uh, taking the whole problem, we break it, it might be a long-term problem, we break it into short-term parts. <coughs> And each of them, we take a, define a small problem, we win the prototype, we run the prototype for that. So after the huge problem, and once that is done, then for the whole uh, clients, say the, for the large number, then we work with the ISU, the Industrial Service Unit team, uh, which comes of engineers, to build a whole system or a product that we are doing, for example, with Optimera. So the UI and the coding and all that, but the core engine will be the mathematics that we have done. For example, there are a lot of nonlinear optimization uh, models that I have worked with. So once that is done, TCS gets revenue out of uh, building the bigger system and applying to the client. So this is the total life cycle. In the meantime, even this Optimera, for example, is not a final product. We are trying for further iterations, adding more things, tweaking some more assumptions, constraints, and doing that. So this is a sample of my work assortment optimization, uh, we, had, we had done for a large pharmacy chain in the US. The challenges and what sort of uh, TCS solution and the R&D role that we use, the technology we have used, and the benefits it just covers all that. Uh, I hope I didn't leave any slide in between. Yes, so I think I've covered it from the, my point of view. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, depends on the area, but you can uh, definitely uh, city vote. Research is under city vote. Comes under city vote. For the time being, you can contact me. I can also connect you to the right person. Yeah, sure. Sharda dot Ramanin. Oh. Okay, I can tell you my email. Just Sharda dot Ramanin at TCS com. Sorry? Yeah, okay. It's on? Okay, let, let me take the problem of assortment optimization that I was talking about. So this is for a large retailer who has around 4,000, 5,000 stores across the uh, US. So what they want to do is optimize the revenue in their store uh, by, uh, you know that uh, in these stores you have these categories, like beverage is one category. So you have different categories occupy different space on the store shelf space. So they want to optimize they want to find out how much space should they give for each of these categories so that the total revenue of the store is optimized, is maximized, obviously, in this case. So you have, uh, say, a typical store will have 35 categories. And you have the constraints here are the store shelf space will be, um, you know, you'll have a minimum or a maximum shelf space. So the sh store space is constrained, is given. And each of the categories can occupy, there'll be a minimum or maximum space five feet to 10 feet, things like that. So this forms a nonlinear optimization problem. And so, so we it, also have for each yeah, the space constraint, total okay. store space. Both minimum max. For example, can it fit into one also? No, they already have these 35 categories defined. The only thing is how much space. Uh, no. There is a concept like uh, space elasticity, which says that as you increase the space, the sales increases. It's a typical S-shaped curve. But after some time, the sales doesn't increase infinitely. 
So you have to model that. Yes. yes, we take the previous, yeah, I'm coming to the data part. So we take for this, what we do is we collect data. The data will consist of the last one year, 52 weeks data of the sales of each of these products and the space that they have currently occupied. Okay, so this is a nonlinear optimization problem and this is for one store like this we will have 1000, 2000 stores data. So the amount of data is very large, amount of variables are very large, meaning that you have various costs coming in. There are not only uh, items kept on the shelf, you have back room and even to keep there you have costs Then items have to come from the delivery center. So those costs, so there are various costs, the various, the, there's a large number of variables involved and large number of data, 6,000 uh, stores or 2,000 stores and 52 weeks of data is really large. And there's a lot of noise. So the first step is the uh, data analysis, data mining, wherein you find out w and uh, to eliminate the noise. Then after that, there are all these statistical techniques you do, correlation. All these are tools, the mathematical tools are used, as he said, rightly as tools. So you find out correlation, regression, for example. One of the things, like you talked about demand, we also consider the demographics of the people who live in that area. You have more Hispanics, you have more English, Hispanics buy bakeware or English buy, say, some stickers. So we have taken the uh, demographic variables, which go up to 64 to 72, find the correlation, do do clustering based on the demographics. So PCA, clustering, these are mathematical models, methods that we use for that. So once we cluster and group the stores based on the sales. Do you also have seasonal Sorry? Seasonal yes. In case of seasonal variation, we take three years data so that the seasonality can be taken off. Otherwise, just the one year data is more than enough. And seasonal products are also looked at separately. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You have promotions. See, either they have the promotions on the same shelves or on separate shelves. Yeah, all those factors. The number of factors, number of variables are very, very, very large. And each of them, like even looking at factors, we look at competitors. For one store, what are the competitors around that store? What is the effect of the co competitors on this? What are similar stores near that store? So what is the effect of those similar stores for these sales? Then what is the effect if it's a specialty store? Suppose you have a college or a school nearby. So there are a lot of data they are ready to give you. It's how much sense you can make out of that. So for each of this competition, you should have a model that uh, takes care of this competition. So that, uh, that's why I said it's a big framework. Do you ask questions? Yes, yes, that's what I said. We interact directly, we go there, talk to them, find out, go to their stores, go to their thing to understand what is happening. Repeatedly also. Also, once you supply the final. Oh, yes. Recently in October, the implementation happened, and uh, it this led to some 20% reduction in inventory, which was very good for them. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So they directly saw profits. So we don't directly give a good solution. It will be a quick and dirty solution. Then we iterate, like he was pointing out, the assumptions will be wrong. There are so many assumptions we make, which will be wrong. There will be so many constraints which are really wrong for that particular store, that constraint won't be there. So we iterate again and again to finally get a good model. And that model works, and that's how a patent comes otherwise. So this is a complete life cycle. First we do a POC, a quick prototype. And once we know it works and we have cleaned up the model, then we go to the bigger model. Did you say that you have Yes. That you can customize for individual customers? Is that what it is? For uh, any uh, retailer customer, yes. You can customize it for yes. them based on this? Yes. So here, uh, uh, mathematics is used as a tool. It's about applying mathematics. It's about understanding. It's not about just regression. It's understanding what regression can do. And, and uh, definitely a mathematician is a better position than an engineer. I have worked with engineers, so I'm telling you. So it is for you, you people to come up and take up this challenge. How many? There is one, uh, Dr. Murli Dharan from TIFR. It's not from my team, but he works close. What happens is there are people scattered. Dr. Uh, Sain Gupta, Professor Sain Gupta, he's from IIT Karakpur. So he's in Bombay. 
it's, a, uh, it's not my team, but there are some four or five people, but most of the engineers are from IITs. Industrial engineering, she was pointing out. They've done PhD in uh, industrial engineering. And so they have a mathematics background. Okay, this was done by my team, but we get it reviewed, we have conversations with them to improve the model. So they are involved as uh, for uh, going through it and reviewing it. This was done actually in collaboration with the retail group because the retail part of it, there's a lot of retail knowledge involved, which I had to learn. So it is done in collaboration with them. Do you have one more question? Yeah. Is it for Um, like you correctly pointed out, a typical mathematician will have a lot of abstract knowledge and he will know the theory behind all the uh, concepts that you put into use. So uh, how does a postgraduate or a graduate student adapt himself or herself to the corporate lifestyle? I mean, what are the things that maybe he should or she should be knowing before entering the corporate world, apart from the maths? See, the actual uh, so qualities you like, are what he said, being open. You don't have to know optimization. Even if you're a mathematics student, you can come here and learn. Right. I mean, optimization techniques, I mean, even we are taught. So uh, to actually put them into practice, uh, are you be, will you be giving us training, or is there going to be a training yeah. before that, before yeah. joining? If you're joining my group, I'll give you perfect training. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I think you people are very lucky. You have MATLAB, you have SAS, you have R. So if you learn regression, why don't you quickly run a regression on uh, using R and see what the results are? Why don't you play with the uh, things you're interested in? Why don't you identify what you are interested in and start seeing the results? See, you cannot say the curriculum is not, uh, it's theoretical. It's time you people started playing with things. You have ready-made R software, you just download our project. It is very statistical, mathematical, uh, friendly. So you can run any of this, get your results, change it distribution, anything you can do. Whatever you are taught, try to practically do it. And when you see that happening, that will help you, that experience. Okay. So, yes, yes, all these basic things. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Can I make a suggestion? Uh, not that it's a good idea that, uh, see, in, in MSc curriculum in, in many various uh, places, there is a component called the project work. And most often the students go and take some theorem and try to write it. Maybe it's a good idea to put out a few problems in your website that you work with, so which they can take and uh, try to do an applied uh, kind of thing as an NSC project, exactly taking up on what you have suggested, perhaps. So you should put up your website, some of them. Absolutely. And internship is what kind of funding will you provide if any math student coming for that kind of uh, research? Because uh, it's not a short term, it, it could be some more time. And uh, even these days, uh, mathematics research also, we have, because of funding, people are getting more attracted. And because of funding for your uh, jobs in corporate world also, we are missing some people in our science career. <laughs> so what kind of funding you will giving this? People. See, for computer science, we have a formal funding process. Okay, as uh, the only criteria is you have to do computer science in India, PhD in computer science. If in India. if a math student coming for research in maths, uh, they have some assurance that after they have some job assurance. So, uh, if a math student coming for research there, it really needs they may get or they may not be getting their results. But what kind of assurance will you give if they come for that? Have to go case by case. But getting people in maths, it's really, if, if you have such a kind of uh, programs, so then... TCS offers is, suppose you join TCS, and then you want to do your PhD, you can take a break two years or three years, and then come back, your, your job is uh, there. Right? Because we are really not aware of those kinds. So many of uh, my colleagues missing their research because they don't want to do in abstract sense. They really want to do something in the corporate world. So. Yes. TCS has, very, you have very good opportunity in TCS. Okay. They, we have the CTO, Corporate Technology Office. So you can write to them and ask for it and talk to them. This done case by case. Uh, 
are there other companies as well which are uh, promoting maths as a all of them but i speak for tcs <laughs> infosys <laughs> everywhere that's what they mentioned right yeah, but uh, but I think this is a wrong thing to start that you know you want to do research and incorporate world. Yeah, well not research I mean are there other companies that are also open to uh, I mean except investment banks and I mean you know I'm talking about like hardcore companies like Infosys or Wipro uh, who are looking beyond just engineers from IIT. Yeah there are but not that many and uh, it's not so easy to uh, make the connect with them but they are probably not looking for mathematicians per se. What they are looking for is a solution to a problem. Yeah. It could be a logistics problem or it's a supply chain problem. Uh, you know, it, it could be something else that, that uses uh, heavy duty mathematics in it. The corporates, I don't think, even have the kind of wisdom that, uh, you know, that no, you see, they, they know that they need a mathematician. No, that's not the case. They just want a solution to a given problem and then, you know, it's up to you. You have to sort of... I think next that to I financial to services, now the other enti a, a, a entity which is likely to employ mathematicians is uh, consulting agencies. Yeah. Because they would, uh, like McKenzie or uh, various such, and uh, they would employ and then case by case basis they deploy them for a given problem to a given industry. Mm -hmm. But industry per se may not be employing mathematicians full time because then there is a problem. What do they do? I mean all the time. They have one problem to solve. They can't offer somebody a job for that. I, uh, I just wanted to mention something that uh, used to happen in Stephens uh, in, during the placements that uh, yeah. we had companies coming from an actuarial outlook. I mean, so they were either consulting in actuarial sciences or uh, they were, uh, you know, making insurance products and so on and so forth. And they came in typically looking for maths students as well as probably students from an economics background. And uh, of course, the way they go about it is they know the kind of student they want to select and then they make you go through a series of uh, there's written tests, there's interviews and they're constantly testing both your mathematical knowledge thinking from the point of view of uh, how they can use you uh, once they take you up. And a, a number of our math students, physics students as well, uh, went in and uh, got jobs at these places right after their undergraduate degree. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You first no, go ahead. Then I we have can... a question for three of you, which is somewhat general. Uh, as I can see, there is a great divide between this side and that side, if I may say so. So is there some suggestion which can bridge this divide or, you know, we can sort of I mean, do you have any suggestions for people to uh, start a f from, like, while they are studying to do something so that they don't feel so unreal and, or whatever, pure and... <laughs> <laughs> so I have a divide as the first thing is the understanding. You know, it, it seems like a completely different world to me and uh, so... Maybe it's not the same for you, but for me that is one of the things. The other thing is that I, finally I see that whoever is sitting there and solving problems, they are using math. So, and we have a huge community here who might want to know at least and understand even if they don't want to do anything about it or go there and work. But some kind of communication is missing. So. You know, uh, th there was some mention about um, biologists finding it more difficult to learn maths than mathematicians learning a little bit of biology. Now, the, I think the, the divide is, you know, the perceived divide is coming because um, you're thinking that um, you can do the maths that, is, uh, that you would love to do in the corporate world. It's like, you know, um, we had a similar discussion on, uh, in ISI just uh, two, three weeks ago and I was there um, between policymakers and economists, right? And as far as we are concerned, if you ask us what will be the impact of a tax, right? Complex system, many things can go wrong, you have to work it out. It's not exciting to an economist, right? A student can do it. A student is taught how to do these calculations. 
So if you're thinking as faculty, you may not find it interesting. Right? So, so that's why the divide is coming. On the other hand, these can only be solved, the tax incidents that I'm talking about, can only be solved by an economist. So when you're training students, right, that is the thought process that must go in. There will be some people who will do the esoteric stuff, right? And they would enjoy themselves in it. They will not enter the corporate sector. Right? Unless, you know, as she said in Applied Maths, there could be challenging problems in the corporate sector. Right? Like the one she was talking about. Another big problem that, uh, you know, once she solved it, she would lose interest in it. Right? And then, you know, some other student may come up and fine tune it while she will move on to some other problem. So that's the challenge that a new problem gives, right? which we in research expect to get every day. Right? So that's the divide. That's really the divide. But if we are willing to accept the fact right, that I'm going to search for challenging problems in the modern world, a lot of new problems are you know, coming up which are as challenging. And remember, whether it is, may, may not be so much in maths, and I don't know the history of maths as well as you people do, but certainly, many of the problems which at one time or, or you know were considered esoteric was somehow triggered by something that they were trying to explain in either way right so in that sense this divide is completely perceived it's just that what one wants to do right not everybody would want to join the corporate sector and not everybody would want to do esoteric research it's just that what Rajiv was saying that in the school curriculum or in the college curriculum or in the university curriculum if these enabling courses are there, right? if somebody finds the corporate world challenging, some of the problems that they face challenging enough. You know, one of the big issues at one time in, uh, was um, finding the right routes and fares for airlines. This was a huge problem. Right? When uh, I was a student, I remember almost all the operations research and uh, departments tackling it. The same was with telephone lines. Now we, you know, we don't think about it. But those were problems which were solved by universities for the corporate world. Right? So, you know, so you, it, it's a, the, the divide is purely one of perception. It's just that what you want to do. Uh, just I would like to add to the same point as she was asking, maybe one skill the youngsters today need to have, especially math students, is communication skills and also the technology skills. Like, you know, what happens is often math students, they might be very good in solving problems, but, you know, they won't speak out. Like, you know, little bit might be uh, more helpful if they want to be part of the corporate world. And also this uh, flexibility, like, you know, in the internet, a lot of resources like, uh, and I think right now this placement, uh, like when they come for placement, the companies also look for the aptitude and they are giving sufficient training for the students. Yeah, I would like to uh, comment that yes, communication skill is a must because uh, if you know how the solution but you don't speak up, then the other side won't know that you have a solution, number one. The second thing is uh, technology skills as you put it. I mean. Uh, today a mathematician who has any intention of interacting with the industry has to get familiar with uh, computers, software, mathematical software, various kinds. Not just one that I know only this one, I will only do this. If in that industry they use something else, they will not even talk to you. So you have to show three, four things that you know, okay, you are flexible in using any of these. So both these are given. If a mathematician wants to do interact with industry, both these is a must. Then other things come on top of that. So I just wanted to say, I mean, as a sort of aging mathematician, I have no wish to go into industry. But yeah. on the other hand, I do think that it's my responsibility to foster a climate where my students have the option to do yeah. that. So I think the divide is not that we all want to go, go do uh, uh, industrial jobs, but that we want I would like my curriculum to reflect that yeah. and, and to open it up to students and, you know, I think one of the challenges I struggle with is persuading students that they don't have to have a career in research just because they see only faculty who do research. I mean, that's our choice, but 
I think we promote that too much and we don't tell them that, hey, there are lots of other jobs out there. Yeah, I agree with you 100 percent there, that we have to give, make them aware that there are other options which are also good. Yeah, and, and not sort of focus narrowly on, if you, do, if you don't do research, you're crap, you know what I mean? And I think there is too much of that and that really needs to, uh, yeah. that is the divide, I in, think, in, 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 in the in expectation and... Uh, <coughs> I, I said something in SNE which was not very well received, but the idea went across, so let me say it here again. Uh, this is without any uh, prejudice to any group, that uh, our scientists don't have social skills, <laughs> and our social scientists have no analytical skills. <laughs> Therefore, they have to be brought together. Okay, so, so is it uh, fair to suggest that perhaps in the next meeting uh, you should also have a component where you will think about a curriculum that is uh, incorporating all the suggestions that came up here. That might be a good contribution. Uh, that it <laughs> no, it is not, it is not, uh, I did not mean in the sense of uh, women's mathematics conference. I meant in sense of some mathematics conference in which many, many of the people who are here participate. That is the sense in which I said. It's not uh, with a gender uh, intention at all. Yeah. Yes. In the present state in the curriculum, we uh, emphasize a lot of, a uh, uh, lot of emphasis is given to individual performance and individual achievement. And when the student goes into the outside world, most of the time, especially if the problem concerned is interdisciplinary, uh, you need to have a group work. In fact, I think at an MSc level or even at a deep project level, we need to have uh, students combining together and four, three or four people doing one project together and uh, involving the industry. Like as I said earlier, the mathematics person need not do all the biological problems. He only have to, has to interact with the biologist. I want to organize, uh, you know, seminar courses kind of thing, get biologists to come in and talk to your students no, or get some economists to come and talk. Yeah. For example, if I do, if I need an animal experiment, I cannot do it on my own. I need a biologist to do yes. that. I will do only the mathematics part. Yeah. 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 Uh, I want to tell Krishna that uh, at uh, CMI we have tried this experiment with uh, a we have our standard MSc math uh, course which has been going on like the other universities or other institutions. But uh, in addition to that, we, without disturbing that, we started another program which I have called uh, MSc Applications of Mathematics. And right now there is a stream for finance and another stream for computer science. Over time we may add cryptography or biotechnology or so on, depending on uh, how we are able to uh, arrange teaching and uh, interest among students. So for that, what approach we have taken is, uh, we have already an existing curriculum, may not be ideal, we can revise it, but uh, a very minimal dose of mathematics along with uh, probabilities, statistics, economics, finance, econometrics, computing. Uh, this is the package for uh, aimed towards uh, the finance industry's students who intend to go. Yeah, uh, let me respond to that. The point that I was suggesting is that uh, it is not that we did not have MSc courses which are of our, uh, applicable in nature. If you look at many of the universities, they don't have a huge number of these courses. But somehow in this country, in these various research institutes, so-called poor mathematicians, have not come. That is one of the reasons why uh, Professor Shah's uh, comment of this divide, they have not recognize the fact that we are not, uh, as uh, it has emerged now, we are going to ensure that our students are aware of various options, for which you have to incorporate in the field of mathematics courses itself a small component. It is not that you said the field of mathematics course. That is not the sense in which I was making that suggestion. Some awareness like a project or whatever that is that you do, that is the com that is what, what the one is talking about. So that even if you are an who would like to uh, who likes it then is good, has an option in case they would like to shift. It is something like that. So that the culture becomes part of mathematics culture, which doesn't exist. There is a serious divide 
as she was talking about, which is that most of the research is towards the federal organizations don't even recognize anything that is remotely has an application. Or even uh, accept or even give the possibility for the students that they can go and do something in that area. It is like that. We are only looking in terms of the students going and taking up a, a postdoc or whatever that is. Or go as teachers. We keep taking pride in saying that either we become a good researcher or become a good teacher. That's what they are trying to do. Here the mindset, that is the mindset that we would like to uh, address and see if there is a, a possibility of opening it up. That's what the sense which probably uh, Professor Shaw was mentioning this. Shanti. Shanti. The short answer to your question is no. We can't do that. If we uh, think in these, uh, you know, three-year bachelor's, two-year master's sort of thinking, where, you know, the students join a particular discipline to study from the time when they're 18 years old, it's not going to do it. We can try. Which course? Biology? Economics? Computer science, which course? No, no, you can even call it a course in how to get yoga Nobody will, seriously, Krishna, nobody will learn anything there. No, no, except that you want to learn something. You, you will learn the fact that there is some. You will learn the fact that there is something beyond foreign theorems and become a researcher or a good teacher or a postdoc. That is the, that is the point. See, if you take a typical student, at least I am talking to you from my own experience in this, for example, in one institute. I can guarantee you that if I call all my graduate students here and I ask them, most of them will not have an idea that there is something beyond, like beyond these three possibilities. The postdoc or a good teacher or a researcher. That is the mindset that one is talking about. So for which you can even have a course where some people come and just uh, give seminars about what they have been doing. Krishna, mindset will change by conveying attitude to them. By one course, the mindset won't change. We have to convey the attitude to the students. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I believe that it's probably possible. No, no, formal link, yes. They also do challenging problems, we also do challenging problems and there is a lot of mathematics in between which probably either side and, and there, there is a lot of skill lost because people are not talking to each other. So which is, you know, to me as an economist, that's a social bad, right? It's some skills are available and they're not being used. Yeah, third floor, there is also no communication between physics and mathematics. So this is something like that, I would say. Yeah. But I can, I can tell you that when I studied economics, since it was an arts discipline at that time, so I had to study English and Bengali because I was in Calcutta, right? And, uh, you know, picked up everything when I went abroad because abroad you could do any courses you like. Our economics training was fantastic in college. So I took about uh, more than 70% of the courses I took were in the math mathematics department and in operations research rather than in economics. So unless you give that sort of you know, exposure, you, you're not going to do it with one or two courses. I have a comment about this, you know, and this business of talking to people in industry and so on. People in research have a, a life which is devoted to learning, and we have a lot of time to do this. People in industry are probably not interested in talking to you in abstract things. So I think that's not how you're going to develop connections. I mean, it, it would have to be more targeted or specific, because they don't, uh, if they're meeting a deadline, they're not going to want to just come and, you know, when you, when you discuss a research problem, right, you talk about it for days and weeks and so on, and you have the time. I don't know that it can be quite that loose, so the connection has to be more, made more practical in some way, right? Yeah. But it would have to be targeted, I think. Seminars would help, and I, I also think that this internship concept is very good. So in the summer vacation, uh, when the students are on a break, you can put that in as part of the course curriculum and tell them to go to uh, some corporate and do some. Yeah, that can be made compulsory. Yeah,
Yeah, that that they they them hands on. Yes, Actually, yeah, we have. earlier Rajiv had asked me to say something, so let me say it now. That in IDF, right, when the, my institute, which does research in social sciences, three years running now, we have had uh, students coming and interning with us from Kanpur IIT, from the maths department. So the students are looking for something. Right. And now it's up to the faculty to give it to them. Right, from undergraduate to graduate. Different from undergraduate to graduate. Some of these research. That's what we have. No, every university can do that. Every university can do that. Undergraduate or postgraduate. I think one can have a course based on the uh, Encyclopedia of Science. <laughs> no, my, my feeling is if a serious attempt is made to do this, more students will come forward to do mathematics. Because right now the perception about mathematics is that it is not uh, a very, you know, applied in some sense and it's, it's very theoretical, very esoteric. And many students actually want to do something that is applied. Students have a wish to, you know, do, make a difference to something or the other, you know. So if, if you make the possibility uh, a real one for them as part of the math <coughs> curriculum itself, many more students would end up doing mathematics and that might improve the overall quality of education in this country. Thank you very much. So this is the last of the sessions, I think. Thanks a lot for the participation. So I'd like to thank all the panel pe members today and all the speakers who came and participated and made this a very successful event, I think. So maybe it will be one of more, and Jaya and I will find out how to ask the industry to give us some money next time but <laughs> but thank you all and I hope you have a safe journey home uh, somebody has bought some books yesterday and forgot to pick them up okay that's clear so okay so well have a safe trip home and see you all again sometime